All right, nerd shit. Got another review. Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Awesomeness. Madness. Where should we start? We um, should probably start. First, we'll do the spoiler review part and talking about it, and then we will critique Grace Randolph. No, uh, not necessarily her. Just some of the stuff that we've seen other people complain about the movie. But mostly Grace Randolph. Should Where we, do we start? start? First, let's start with The Return of the Goat. This movie was amazing. It I- is my favorite Marvel movie out of all the Marvel movies. That means you prefer this over Endgame. Yes, Endgame. No, Endgame. Get- Endgame, that, I mean, Infinity War. No one, I don't care about Endgame. Yeah, I do. Now, this movie for sure has its flaws, but the Sam Raimi stuff for me was so good that it overpowers all of the plot holes and clunky writing and the ridiculousness that is the America Chavez as a character and her origin story. All none of that shit mattered. Things just got out of hand. To me, it's none just of it mattered. Raimi. So what? What I like in this movie, like all the shots feel very Evil Dead. You know what I mean? Off the bat, that's one thing that got me hyped. Off the bat, this movie was so Raimi. And when Wanda spoilers, by the way, it's the main villain, and when she does the jump scares, it's like very Evil Deadish, and like the way she's filmed in the darkness, you know, makes her look intimidating. Yeah, like for example, lots of people complain about some of the dialogue and stuff, and you're right, some of it is, they are right, some of it is clunky. At the end, when zombie Doctor Strange goes up to her with half of his face missing and gives her a pep talk, that dialogue was no doubt clunky. Well, it was like but, one of those things where you had like cap to, oh, we're nearly finished, so okay, let's just wrap it up. But what I was geeking out on was the, how metal him no. having souls was. Not that part. I mean, at the very, very end, when he gives her a pep talk, when she's she's strapped down to the, uh, where she would be sacrificed. At the very end, like he he tells her some really cheesy stuff, but I didn't even really pay attention to that. What I was paying attention was Cumberbatch's acting, because the acting and the way he was switching his face and everything, that was a straight up callback to Army of Darkness. So I was I was the Raimi stuff was just amazing. I was really geeking out. That makeup was fantastic. And since Sam Raimi's a big fan of the comics, we got very comic accurate stuff like Scarlet Witch being very OP. Like I saw a lot of people saying Scarlet Witch should not be this OP regardless, yet she is in the comics. And the MCU, when she, you know, damages Thanos heavily. Thanos. No, that's just in the movies, but like her main feat of power is that she says no more mutants and mutants go extinct for a couple of years in the in the comics. That's exactly one of her main feats. Well, that we ain't even drinking yet. Now we are. What else? But just off the rip, how what really got me? What I was thinking during up until the point where was it like Shuma Gorath comes in and they're chasing um, America Chavez in the six one six universe. And when they confirmed it was like- no, no, in the very beginning, all of that stuff like the first fifteen minutes. Compared to other Marvel directors, which there are, not to make it sound like a dick, but they're like no names. Mm-hmm, like the Russo brothers or John Watts. Yeah. Even John Watts. If you go back to the Spider-Man, Spider-Man 1, 2, and 3 from this new trilogy that he directed, and, uh, No Way Home is okay, but a lot of it is just like generic and bland. Except for the, you know, the final half. Yeah. Like, like the first half, no one cares about, and the second when it starts to get good. But when you're talking about, uh, like, visual storytelling, from the very beginning, it's it comes in, uh, America Chavez and Doctor Strange from a different alternate strange are running, and from the very beginning, the camera zooms in, boom, who's this person? Then it pans to the right, boom, who's this person? It's very Like, they are, they are telling you off the rip, like, the level of, of visual storytelling is... And appreciate. I think this might be the only movie about that terrible color grading, since a lot of the colors pop. So like a lot of the visuals, like like, boom, pop. Like, yeah, everything looked a bit better, I think, because of the color grading. And at this point, when people go, oh, shouldn't the CGI this, some of the CGI that, like you people try so fucking hard. 
to just say something in a review. Plus, it's most like, of the time the CJ looks. It's like either good. either the movie comes out and people it doesn't matter who it is. It's always some lame lame dude with more subscribers than, than we have. They always talk about how oh it was a CGI fest. Oh you can tell this. Oh you can tell that. You can't like, do. Dude, you can tell that. You can tell that in every fucking movie now. Like say something of it. Okay, so they give Black Panther a pass, but not this one. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. And plus, it's Doctor Strange. You can't do a movie about CGI, so it has to be a CGI fest. But a lot of it did look really good. Even the even the, the like the detail. Ultron bots, they looked very nice. And yes, they are Ultron bots. Yeah, that was cool. But that's just a callback to all the multiverse stuff. I wonder who built them, like that version of Ultron. And I just somehow power we powered them. Probably, like they kill Ultron, but they have the robots go to a different AI. No, most likely it was just uh, there was some type of battle, and spoilers. Reed Richards is there, so he probably reprogrammed them and made them centuries. I mean, he is the smartest person <laughs> in this universe. That's what he's introduced as the smartest person on the planet. Reed Richards of the Fantastic Four. Direct quote. Yeah. What do you think of the cameos? Like, Professor X? Okay, so, let me first say. I was watching this so much. People complaining about the cameos. We, it wasn't the people we wanted. It so? was supposed to. It was supposed to be Superior Iron Man. Wait, it wait, was wait. supposed to be Wolverine. Or it was supposed to be the X-Men. Or Toby. Yeah, I actually heard Toby. Okay, but this is the thing. Where is that energy? For that person that you were following on YouTube or on Twitter, all right, whoever that lame per that lameo who told you that all this stuff was gonna happen, like where is that energy for that person? Because that's the person that told you, and then you were being gullible. Oh, oh yeah, this is this is gonna happen for sure. Oh yeah, never take leaks seriously, no matter no, if they're it, true or not. It's it's it, it's so it's so stupid. But who told you that? Um, some who told, guy. No, no. Who told you that? Who told you that this was 100%? Who told you, hey, you gotta trust these guys. All this, all this, and all that has happened. Some guy on 4chan that claims he worked with Marvel. It's ridiculous. But I just think it's very funny how no one has the pitchfork energy for the people that sold you the bullshit, right? The people that you're following, uh, and they say one thing that's positive. And you guys praise it all week long on Twitter or until the next thing drops. And then when they say something negative, you guys shit the bed until something else drops. It's like, those are the people who you got to have that pitchfork energy for. Because, uh, for sure, a lot of people, because they all correct, they all predicted that it would be the Spider-Man in No Way Home. Yeah. So Ooh. I guess that emboldened their, their I don't want to say stupidity. They, that emboldened their feelings of entitlement, and they were like, "Oh yeah, for sure this is happening. For sure that's happening." Well, and I didn't, and, and I would have loved to see Superior Iron Man as much as the next person, but I just didn't think that that was gonna happen. Yeah, I mean, the the cameos were cool. Like people were excited to see Tom Cruise Iron Man. Yeah, it would have been cool, but I never, I didn't believe it was gonna happen. Yeah, people when they revealed Grace. people when they revealed Reed Richards, like everyone was like, "Whoa, who?" And when Miss and when Xavier came around, like everyone was clapping. And I liked the little music tone with the original X Men theme. You hear the little bell? Yeah, and the X Men thing. Yeah, that was like that was cool. What do you think of Moments. British? What do you think of British Captain America? Her face looked weird. Well, because I think that was the actress that was supposed to be Steve's wife. No, that's not it. Her face just looked weird. She looked very pale. Makeup and her face just looked weird. But aside from that, it was great. Now these are the, these are the complaints. People are crying about. I've seen people that like it, and I've seen people say that don't like it. I've seen the people who are like you know the typical people who are like, oh, is it woke? It's woke this and woke that. How is it woke? There are moments that you can look either way. So for example, they introduced the Illuminati, not the real Illuminati, but they introduced the Illuminati. And they all get wiped out in the same 15 minutes or so that they're introduced. Okay, not a fan of that, but this is Marvel, okay? I let go of um, them doing cool, accurate comic book stuff a long time ago. It's always an adaptation. 
So some people are saying that because all the men died first and it was just two women fighting at the end, that was like the woke thing. It could be. You could see it that way. You could not see it that way. It's all on your point of view. But, they, but the that. girls still died. Like one of them got, the British shit got split into two pieces. Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. That's all on your point of view. It's like if you want to be negative, then you're going to see things negative. If you want to be positive, you're going to see things positive. That's up to you. Though the death of Black Boat, having his own braid implode inside his own head. That was cool. Like, I did not expect that at all. Yeah, that was cool. I didn't expect that either. Like, the when, he ki- when he killed Strange in the flashback, that was cool as shit too. I'm Oops. sorry. And just obliter- obliterated him slowly. That was cool. And the fact that he, he, it's also nice, it's also a little detail that Reed Richards accidentally gives Wanda a clue about his power, like what can happen, how to kill him, because he says he can destroy it with one whisper from his mouth. And Wanda, like, closes his mouth shut and, like, you know, he panics and he commits suicide, kind of. Yeah. Uh, I don't understand why it wouldn't have ripped through his mouth. Why it had to go, like, why did it have to go back into his brain? I don't get, I, I mean, if you want to critique it, right? Why didn't it just burst a hole in? Because it's Marvel. It's not gonna be raid our depot stuff. Or no, no. But like I said, if you want to critique it though, like it wouldn't have made sense. Like, yeah, he could have just. Why wouldn't have? Why wouldn't it have just ripped open a new, a new mouth? You know what I mean? It's Marvel, and plus, it has it, that was a very cool makeup effect. Yeah, like, there's lots of stuff like that you can you can nitpick, but like that mask where the brain where the brain slowly drips through the mask, and he and he got like a bunch of blood in his eye, like and a little beep thing. Like that, like here's a little beeping thing, like from this antenna thing, that so, like that slowly turns off. Yeah, it's like a pulsing. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff like that. But my my stuff, when I hear people talk about this, what what I was thinking today, I was thinking, my dudes, my dudettes, my bros, my broettes, you guys are like ten years late to complain about fucking Marvel quality. Like I'm sorry, but you guys are like, shut up, either pay the admission or don't. But complaining. Dude, get like it's just you're ten years too late. That's all I'm gonna say. You're ten years too late. And you guys, like the same people who are complaining, made Endgame like a two billion dollar movie and made No Way Home almost a two billion dollar movie. And the plot for No Way Home is kids are gonna go to college. They don't get accepted into MIT so because he- the world knows that Peter Parker is Spider Man. Peter Parker then goes to Doctor Strange. Then he does- cock blocks interrupts him while he's doing a spell so it comes out wrong that rips open the multiverse then the other spider man come through because villains come through and then they go home that's a that's a saturday morning cartoon plot and yeah you like, guys made it almost a two billion dollar movie so and the movie has a lot of stupid issues like i'm still mad that the way he made him dumb like cast well, like do you want this isn't the right time to discuss it but yeah what do you think of Doctor Strange's in this movie? Like the, I think the dark one was the What If one. Have you seen the episode of What If? Yeah, no, I don't think he's the, the that because the one in the What If gets locked in a mirror, in like in a different dimension. But that is a different dimension. Yeah, but that was that wasn't a, that wasn't only okay. This is also why I like the movie a lot because it also it's pointing to me where they're going. Now I really like Jonathan Hickman's writing and his Avengers arc that eventually goes into Time Runs Out with the Incursions is freaking amazing. And then that leads to Secret Wars, which is sig- which they are signaling to me when I saw this movie that they are taking that Incursions route because at the end of the movie, Charlie Theron pops out and tells him, Doc, you know, Stephen Strange, you're responsible for an incursion. Like, we're gonna go fix it. Unless you're scared. And he's like, all right, let's go. Then opens his Illuminati eye. <laughs> But that place that he went to, where he fights the double, that was a place where there was an incursion. So an incursion, if you didn't, because some of you don't read the comics, some. two realities clash. Oh, you know, it's the same um, loss of, of physics. You two should be closer. Keep them away from me. Same matter can occupy some space. I'm still kicking. I must be on Broadway. So in the incursion storyline, multiverses are colliding. They're, they're, they're circling each other, more or less, trying to occupy the same space. So as they collide, if the heroes do nothing, both dimensions um, 
get destroyed. If the if one beats the other, like literally in a fight, you know, then the one that wins remains, and the one that loses gets gets erased. Those are the rules of the incursions. So that world that they went to was a world that had lost the incursion. What do you think of all the deaths in this movie caused by Wanda? Like, what do you think is Wanda's awesome? What do you think of Wanda as a villain in this movie? I think she's badass. I thought it was great. Like, the, I wasn't expecting it, so it was great. Yeah, the trailer, you know, didn't show her to be a villain. It, what I was thinking of it watching it... It subverted my expectations correctly. JJ! What I was thinking was that it actually made Wanda, WandaVision worth watching. Yeah, like, the back of my mind, like... If, if this was planned out from WandaVision and now, then I probably might rewatch it. Because instead of WandaVision just being like a lame hokey pokey TV show... It ties in with this one. The Better. origin... No, like the origin... Irrelevant origin story to why she is this way. Because Wanda is completely... She's completely nuts at this point. Yeah, like she's she is devoted. completely gone. She's devoted to trying to see her kids. She is fully... And... In grief. She's and fully delusional. And she was corrupted by, I don't know what the book's name is, some of it called a Dermonomicon. We'll call it the Necronomicon. Legend has it yeah, that it was written the by the Dark One. We'll call it that. Necronomicon Ex Mortis. Roughly translated, Book of the Dead. The book served as a passageway to the evil worlds beyond. was written long ago when the seas ran red with blood. It was this blood that was used to ink the book. In the year 1300 AD, the book disappeared. But yeah, she was completely... Uh, she was a, the same way in real life a person is altered by a mental illness that is what she was to me she was a person that was com someone who was not stable and she was completely altered by her obsession yeah the and in in the real world obsessions mental obsessions lead to physical compulsion so the way i saw it it was that um i heard it, it i heard it critiqued by grace randolph that she didn't go all out but that was her being reasonable she killed all those people but not enough to like, completely destroy everything. When well, she was hunting, hunt, hunting down the girl and killing all the Illuminati members and killing so many other people, that's when she went nuts. Yeah, the kids are fake. That's part of the men the illness, right? Yeah. The obsession. And I saw some people say, well, can't she have kids and this and that? And it's like, you're not getting the point, okay? There are people right now in the real world that have lost loved ones. And if they had the power to do something to bring them back, they would take that ride, right? As messed up as it would be and all that stuff. That's what makes the comic books awesome. That they take regular situations, then they add a fantastical layer over it. And the reason that you relate to it, in my opinion, is that you relate to some of the decision making like, that happens in the movie or in the story. Comic like, book, whatever it is. Like Jackson MK11. Like, I don't, you haven't played in a while, but he was in Kronika's side because he wanted a better life for Jackie. Exactly, there you go. He wanted her to never serve or deal with any hardship he went through in MKX. It's all about things you've experienced, and maybe the younger generation hasn't experienced that type of loss. For example, there's a clip in Naruto where Pain tells him, I still have time to revive those I killed since I arrived in the Leaf Village. Sometimes you actually convince yourself there's no way they could die. This naivete can't be helped. Especially with a generation like yours. Or Laurie Strode from Halloween 2018. In the movie, like she has an extreme obsession with killing Michael Myers to the point where she left all her family connections, you know, be crumbled since she made her daughter Yes. To a killing machine. Yes. And People become from her obsessed. exception with Michael Myers, she was always like even the mere mention of him would like put her in like a little breakdown thing. Like and towards the early part of the movie, when he's getting transported, she has a, you know, she has a breakdown when thinking about the past stuff about Michael Myers. And throughout the movie, she's trying to kill him to get closure. Same thing in Halloween Kills, but to a lesser degree. Yeah, exactly. Good examples of people that become obsessed, 
and they do things that they shouldn't be doing. In this case, it's a grief-stricken mother, and in the, in the generation that is feels before reels, even if even if they weren't real children, I think the current generation of people will, or the younger generation of people at the moment, will definitely understand that. Oh, I also have another example, but I don't want to use it. Master Chief from Halo 5. In the game, like, only reason why he AWOL is because he got a little message thing from Cortana. So, he basically screwed off the UNSC to go find his hollow girlfriend thing. Exactly. People do irrational things. So, to the people who see that and are like, how could this happen? And how could... It's like, come on. Come on, bro. It's just being a part of human. Not only that, but there's this thing in movies where typically when you kind of watch the movie, you have to follow more or less the logic in the movie that's being presented. It doesn't always work. I know it doesn't. But typically, if you follow that logic, you forgive some of the plots. Yeah. And once more again, geez, one of this movie is kind of terrifying. Like, she wipes everyone out, and like, some of the shots where she seemed like some kind of unholy devil, like when she went through the mirror, th like the reflections, and the... Yeah, I heard people complain about that. But I thought the fact that she escaped the mirror dimension through witchcraft was fucking awesome. Yeah, she is the Scarlet Witch. I thought that was a dope display of her power. Because yeah, you know, Doctor Strange is the master of that dimension, but when she got locked in it, and she did get locked in it, she saw a reflection. But what the reflection was, it wasn't just a reflection of what it looked like her. See, people didn't pay attention. The, she, the reflection looked like a reflection of water. It looked like a body of water. Because when she possesses, possesses, can't even speak. When she takes possession of the other Wanda, if you did you say the scene in the cup where the where the cup looks like there's like a storm going on in the cup, or a storm in the teacup. Yeah. So those were were signs of the witchcraft of her power. So and you know her being, you know, at, at the window thing. So when she is in the mirror dimension and she sees that little part that's broken and it looks like a puddle or like a body of water, that is how she gets out. It isn't through the. Yeah, it's a reflection, but it's a reflection that happens to look like a body of water. Yeah. That's how I understood. And witchcraft. And how devoted she is, like. I can't overemphasize it enough, but she's just so goddamn badass in this movie. What do you think of Bernie Cumberbatch's acting? What a funny name. It was pretty good. Um, the wig was crazy. I, I, I can only imagine that was for an aesthetic reason. I, I guess because he wanted him to have like the whole, like the, the bangs flare out like in the comics. But that wig was crazy. <laughs> that wig was crazy sometimes. Some of those shots, that wig was crazy. He looked a little bit reminiscent of Iron Man. I, I did think that during certain shots, like in the beginning, he was a little bit reminiscent of Tony Stark, his appearance. He would be a good Iron Man, though. I don't know about that, but I think they were trying to, uh, like, transplant the emotion of, like, hey, this is kind of like uh, Tony Stark now. You know what I mean? Hey. I could, I'm not saying that was... I mean, I could see it. I got a little bit of vibes. There. Wait, what do you think of the jokes in the movie? Best down, best joke. Trash. Bruce, Bruce Campbell. Oh, the, the cameo. Yeah, I thought the cameo was cool. Some yeah. people thought it was cheesy. How? In every Sam Raimi movie, it's like tradition to either have Bruce Campbell in a starring role, people are dead, or to have him as a cameo. Spider-Man 1, Spider-Man 2, Spider-Man 3. I just thought it was accurate for, for, for a Raimi movie. I thought it was awesome. I was like, Ash, you know? It's good, bad, I'm good. <laughs> this is my boomstick. What do you think of America Chavez? Dumb name. I think one of the worst characters that Marvel has come up with recently, but they happen to make her likable in this movie. Um, we we're talking about the acting. I don't really care about the acting, bro. This is a Marvel movie. Yeah. Um, it, it, as long as it's good enough, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, what do you think of the return of Patrick Stewart? It's that one guy! That was cool, but I thought it was... It didn't make sense that Wanda killed him so easily in a mental battle, but I was like, yeah, yeah, you know, like, I mean, like, I know what those decisions came from, and that was, that was, um, that like, was Feige. Like, was it, like, because of, like, a little red mist thing? Like, could it have been, like, a little bit of corruption? Xavier is overpowered as no, hell. No, Xavier is an Omega-level mutant. I Xavier is super duper, duper powerful. 
<laughs> like, that's the best way I can describe it. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure you would die going to the Joker's head, to be honest. Like, like do, you know, do you know of Onslaught? No. Okay, so Onslaught was a character in the 90s, and Onslaught was the... He is the manifestation of Xavier and Magneto's uh, ill will towards human that they have to keep under control. But, but them combined are so powerful that they created Onslaught. Their subconscious created Onslaught because their, their subconscious was so um, fed up with humans, right? And the way that they've been trying to deal with them for so long and humans don't accept mutants, right? Like Racism. a minority. Yeah. So they were f like that. Uh, their subconscious was fed up. And they're so powerful combined that they created Onslaught. And Onslaught, I don't remember the book exactly, but he was wiping out like a ton. Like this. he was like a, he was like a universe level threat. Look at that. Wait, didn't Wanda Austin kill him during the No More Mutants thing? <clears throat> no, um, she did that in No More Mutants, but there was uh, there was a radius to what what she did. So she killed off most of the main characters, but except for Mr. X. So what happens at first is that she does the whole thing where she reformats the world to her liking and she creates the two babies. It reminds me of the hourglass anyway. But that's a in a confined area. And then from there, with the way the comic book starts, the X-Men fly to the area. They find Magneto, who's like defeated or whatever, because of everything that happened. And that's how they start fighting with her. And then eventually she says the line, no more mutants. And then Lee, they got wiped out from history, just like Thanos. Yeah, for a bit, but then that was a thing for to have the Phoenix return or whatever. What do you think of the musical battle? I thought it was cool. I Very thought it was creative and cool. Oh yeah, oh yeah. What do you think of Downey Elfman's return? After 2017, I think? He actually put some effort into this, so it was a pretty good soundtrack, because he actually put some effort. That's all I can say. He put some effort. You can tell. What do you think of the tone in this movie? How dark it is. How unkid friendly it is. It's not that dark. People. It's a PG-13 movie. I know, but you know how it feels a little bit like you were dead. It's not dark at all. This is what PG-13 movies are. This is just... Uh, that just goes to show you how one note... <laughs> there he is beating that dead horse! Get him! Or one trick pony the MCU is. Simple as that. Same thing with Shang-Chi. The only reason I like Shang-Chi is because it was different enough. And cool action scenes. From the one trick pony. Yeah, because there's a lot of wire food. And that's why it's different enough. That's why I like it. And this is the same way. What do you think of the visuals? Like how they go through different dimensions about... Yeah, the visuals. That was... That was sick. That little... That little part where he keeps... Where they keep going through dimensions, right? The reality is breaking through them. That was... That was a crazy little piece. What do you think of Doctor Strange opening his third eye to not being woke? That's just from the comics. That's a that's like a mode that he hits. The Council of the Illuminati, like very comic, like then br actually bringing in MCU. Well, like I said, I thought it was cool because they were that's from the Hickman run of Avengers, so I thought it was awesome. They're that they're integrating his storyline into this into this phase. And they probably, to me, that they were pointing to Secret Wars. That, that we're gonna get some more incursion level drama. I think at some point in the future, 616 is gonna have an incursion with another reality. And that will be the... That might be the Infinity War. And then Secret Wars will be the end game of the new phase. Well, not even of this new phase, right? Because this is barely phase 4. But of the uh, like, that'll be the next two big event movies. Huh, I, thought, I, don't, I don't know how far they're gonna push it because they could make that. I thought the next event would be like them bringing Galactus. So, you know, he's a literal big deal. It could be that, but if but the Secret Wars is still bigger than Galactus because Secret Wars is multiverse is um, like, the multiverse dying. I think this is what they're gonna do. They're gonna do Galactus because the multiverse dying seems like something like the end of the entire MCU. No, because multiverse uh, Galactus just, just tries to eat planet, planets. Yeah, but, he would just try to gobble up Earth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't know. Like I think they would start with Galactus, then the later thing because that's, yeah, they could bring Galactus in. He they, could be like an Avengers level movie, but for that you gotta have Fantastic Four set up for Galactus. And Otherwise, he, he's not gonna make sense. And you also gotta have the new Avengers. It's, most of them are no longer are no longer the MCU, or you know. But this being the MCU, I think when they would 
I think when they do their Doom reveal, I think it would probably be when he is fighting Galactus. I don't think they would do a fast, Fantastic Four and then have Doom be the first enemy. I mean, you could. That's very, That's very boring. Like what they did with Fan Force. Did. Exactly. But if they brought him in during a Galactus event, that would be pretty cool. What do you think of the story? It's an MCU. Alright, you heard the thoughts. Do you, you think this is a very good movie? The best MCU movie so far? Yeah, this I like this more than Iron Man 1. Like, this is... I was very... Wait, wait, wait. What's better? Spider-Man 2? Or Doctor Strange 2? This is a hard one. Both of them are considered... I one like, of them... I like Sp I'll go with Spider-Man 2 because that has more of the Raimi... That's that's fully Raimi's vision. This was Raimi's vision in the MCU. With with no, it's, this was Raimi's vision with Feige tapping him, going, uh, no, 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 no. not that much. violence. Don't, Too much. Don't show Mr. Fantastic tagging his bones. And, and then being like, uh, no, you know, no, no, we're gonna change that. Don't show the blood that came out from that guy's mask. So that's what this is. Like, there's parts of it that are super duper MCU that you can tell, and that's why. It has its flaws or whatever, but it also feels like a Raimi movie. But there, but his his signature is definitely felt throughout the movie. His fingerprints are on it, and that all was all awesome. over. And that's like, awesome. I heard complaints of people saying there's too much Raimi, but it's a Raimi movie. It's supposed to be Raimi. Everything I do is from the ground up. These motherfuckers round up. Genetically faker than the fruit of veggies at your local Walmart. I take no shortcuts. Fuck your hand out. No wonder why these motherfuckers only fly, fly when they fly with the wind and their hand out. Get the fuck out of here. Real recognize there is what you run from. Type shit that make me bug out with my eyes out. You ain't tryna win, you just tryna play pretend like a Barbie Ken and his fake friends. I'll forever be me, I'll be till the end. If you don't like it, go ahead and fly, fly with the wind.